Hey Realmwalkers, I'm Sardis Orbis, and I hope you're having a pretty good day today. And if you're having a crappy day, definitely come and hang out, because here, at least we'll try and change that. This is episode 27 of Stranded Among the Realms, which is an extreme difficulty playthrough of Nightingale. And the last episode, we got our asses kind of handed to us, didn't we? <laughs> Had quite a few deaths. Um, three officially, I think four or five, we might have gotten injured five times, four times, but Carrie picked us up once or twice, so I'm not going to count those because we're still kind of in the fight. I'm only counting deaths as if we respawn. Um, yes. So, and today we're going to kind of lick our wounds and attempt to recoup some of our uh, essence dust losses because we need to we need to make a couple grand back real quick. And I suppose we may as well uh, get into it, yeah? Now you'll notice we've got 12 stacks of paper. We could uh, extract these right now for 1,200 essence dust, but we don't want to do that yet. We want to turn all this paper into coated paper. That's pretty easy. You know, it's it, it just takes paper and coating. We're going to do this quite a lot. We're going to basically empty out the entire our inventory of regular paper. Now while that stack's cooking, let me show you how to make coding. So let's take just one of these. Let's take... actually let's take... hmm, no, let's take 12 of these. Just regular crude. 13? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. We're gonna make thread. Oops, no, sorry. Refined fiber. Sure, two is good. Let's grab these. Be careful when you, if you auto add paper, because this could also pick the coated paper you've just made. So make sure it doesn't pick that. Otherwise, you'll be wasting it. Okay, so we take that refined fiber and make some fabric. Hello, puppy. That poop, okay. Hope you're not stuck back there. Thanks for the essence dust. Gonna assume that's dog poop. Um, okay, and then to make a coating, just go to your... Um, Refined mortar station and pop in your fabric. This will make you ten. One, one fabric will create ten coated. I think I'm gonna fast forward through all of this process. Um, just make sure you're calculating how much you're using versus how much you're going to have, etc., etc. So you're not. Like me, and just doing this over and over until you catch up. But yeah, I'll see you once we're done. There we go. We've got 12 stacks of coated paper. And it's just basic wood, right? Nothing special. If we extract that, it's 300 essence test. Basically, we triple our output. I know it takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of resources. But, I mean, triple the output. We're we're starting from 69, nice, essence, and let's see where we're at at the end. There we go. I'm sure some of you math folks figured it out long before I was done, but yeah. 3,669 essence dust from 12 stacks of paper. It's great. Now we can do our repair roll and not feel quite so bad about losing 900 in one go. Whew. There's also one other thing where you can get essence pretty relatively quickly, and that's in the guidebook under challenges. There's a bunch of stuff in here that I know we've forgotten or just neglected to to collect. I figured it would come they would come in useful for a day like this when we're super poor. 
So if you can't make coated paper yet, then, you know, start claiming these. Here, this one's 50 essence dust. This one's easy. Just get a, get a survivor. Be revived by a survivor is also 50 essence dust. Yeah, just do a bunch of these. As you progress, you'll get your rewards start increasing. Like here, this reward for advanced builder is 750 essence dust. So that's easy claim. We may as well grab all this now while we're here. Here's a thousand. Yeah, worth. So take a look at that. After claiming all the rewards, we got seven grand now. So yeah, definitely worth going through there just to make sure you get everything as well like if you stack that with the coated paper to essence dust thing then you'll be swimming in essence dust you won't really worry about it for quite a while that said we should probably repair our shotgun too so you might be wondering what are we doing today we have like a quest up there that says, you know, conquer Bastille's Vent. Like, is that what we're going to do? We're going to go into the Hunt Realms? And the answer is no, we're not going to do the Hunt Realms. Not yet. Because we don't really have to do much in there. We'll go back to them, and we'll go back to the Gloom Realms. In a little while. For now, we have to go complete Nelly Bly's quests. So let's bring up the journal. And let's see, which one is it? We gotta find and speak to Nellie Bly. Okay, we gotta go talk to her first. Desert Herbarium. Okay, let's, let's start tracking it. This... Talk to Wilhelmina Sass. Okay, let's talk to her too. This one we can turn in now. For, um... But let's... Let's talk to Wilhelmina first, and then come back to the, uh, to the, to the home. Wait, where is she? Northwest. Right. Haven't been there in a while, huh? Well, let's go on a walk. Oh man, that was quite the run. All right. I think I'm realizing now that this episode is going to be a lot of talking. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. This is actually an old conversation that we probably should have done way long ago, but, um... Oh well. <laughs> We're doing it now. Ah, visitor! You're the only fine soul we've happened upon in this realm, and your appearance is a most welcome surprise. Who might you be? I am a refugee of the Calamity, new to these realms and trying to survive. I think we should have talked to her the very first day we came in here. But, no, oh well. Quite refreshing to meet such an open book, surely filled with tales worth telling. There are a great many new faces in the realms as of late, with a great many stories to tell. Collecting my such stories is my trade, you see. I believe Will Willoughby and Sass in real life is, or was, a journalist? Or a writer? One of those two. Same with Nellie Bly. Nellie Bly is a journalist. Wilhelmina Sass, columnist for Nightingale's finest paper, The Sunday Courier. Overjoyed to make your acquaintance. Okay, so she's also a columnist here in the realms. Now, if you're in need of more material services, nourishment, equipment, protection, I'm certain my companions here can provide. We've always we've always time for a new customer. Interesting that she thinks of people as customers. And if you're interested in doing a bit of digging for me, I might have a proposal for you. We could talk to her, but let's skip that. I might be interested in your proposal.
I heard a fascinating story about an American lawman roaming the realms and trying to look for rather inconspicuous and trying to look rather inconspicuous while he was at it. Journalist's intuition tells me that he's up to something and I'd like to know what. Find him and see what you can learn. Where can I find him? Rumor has it he's currently passing through a provisional provisioner forest. Which one I haven't a clue. I can hardly wait to hear what kind of sordid behavior he's running from or toward. Toward? Toward. Of course, before you go scampering off, is there anything I can do for you? Well, I know the lawman you are so interested in. Wonderful, and have you discovered his aims? He's looking for someone. Someone is hardly a story fit to publish. Keep digging, and there will be a fine reward waiting when you next return. Okay, let's ask about rumors. Ah, you'd like to hear something a bit more current? I can most certainly indulge you. Of course, I'm sure a reasonable realmwalker like yourself can understand that in such turbulent times, they simply cannot apply my trade for free. I'll just have a little peek at the echoes in that hermetic guidebook of yours in return. The chance to peek directly into another's thoughts is one I would relish. Alright, let's ask him about notable people in the realms. I take little pleasure in sharing this bit of news, but it seems the great Nellie Bly managed to escape from damn damnable New York and survive the pale. Should you meet her, know that she and her writings are tedious, moralizing, and in all ways contemptible. <laughs> her banal aphorism even cheated her a seat as the explorer's second, but at least I checked journalism. But last I checked, journalism hardly qualifies one to lead realm workers, as I'm sure you'd agree. Let's ask again. Not that she's ready to share, but come back soon. I'm always chasing leads, and something's bound to come up. Okay. That's all. So we'll have to come back, talk to her again. Later. Back to the respite. Okay, we need to go to a desert herbarium. Yes, desert herbarium. Cool. Let's grab our climbing picks. Because we're really going to need them. Ooh, what's our tier 2 essence at? 200? Um... Nah, let's let's pass. Oh yeah, I picked up some stuff while we're out there. Cause you know, can't help but get more resources. Okay, realm card's done. Let's go. Go to the desert. Off we go. Still hanging around. Jeez. He's better things to do, man. Um, where was Nelly Bly again? Here. So, southwest. South, southwest. Okay. Uh, let's put this on now, because. Best now. Oops, we need food.
We probably should have taken a nap too. I just realized we're super tired. Alright, here we are. Let's talk to Nellie Bly. And a journalist. I see you managed your way here without a proper guide. Given the determination I your brow, I'm guessing this encounter is not simply by chance. Um... I was told you might help me, or vice versa. Then you worked up an appetite for greater things in the face of disaster. First things first, how exactly did you find me? Um, do, do, do. A seasoned realm walker, Aurelio was the name. Aurelio, he put his map down for a second to help you. Then the old walking pickaxe accepted the explorer's new mission after all. Oops. Someone in my line of work ought to know by now never to make assumptions. So tell me, in your own words, what brings you to me? Uh, we share our destination, Nightingale. You seek Nightingale? Oh my heavens no, who planted that seed between your ears? Nightingale is off limits, inaccessible, completely at will. You're certain the city is unreachable? With the portal network dismantled, access was sundered. There's no door left open. Not until we can find a safe means of reopening Nightingale's transepts. If not Nightingale, then where are you headed? With one safe haven out of reach, I continue searching for another. For these souls here, for all who are lost. Which is why we are trying to reach a place known as The Watch. It was a curated realm and so should be easier to access. There we can all take our bearings, and the factions can convene to plan how we might return to Earth. Don't want to go back to Earth, thanks. It's kind of covered in pale, just so you know. Um, but why are you gathering in this desert? At the bottom of this cave, there used to be a permanent portal. Unfortunately, without a, the network, the portal network to direct it, it's just a hole leading nowhere. That's the reason we've assembled this gate lest some wandering fool gets stuck between realms. But if we manage to secure its connection, we could make it safe again. Better yet, we could give it a new destination. Are you suggesting a permanent portal to the watch? Exactly. The goal isn't only to open the door, but to keep that door ajar. Rebuild the network, or at least a piece of it, like it was before the Calamity. To achieve that, we need a portal stabilizer, which is why I've got my hunk on this broken... Which is, which is why I've got my hands on this broken hunk of machinery. If we can repair it, we can attune the portal in the cave to the watch. So long as Quartermates lived up to his promise. So how do we fix it? Three crucial components are missing. A reliable heat source, combustion fluid, and attunement conductor. Typically, the calculator distills such things from pale lodestone, but it's impossible to collect from the interrealmic space with the bound about. Thankfully, calculator technologies are found on magical principles, are founded on magical principles. Thus, scarce resources in the realms can substitute the missing parts, since they're imbued with the same properties, or so Victor asserted. Got it. What resources do we need? We need the following, an Elder Jotunheart, a Pelucidic Etched Ingot, and Automaton Charmo, all attainable from special fantastical creatures. Specific fantastical creatures. Tell me more about the Elder, Elder Jotunheart. The heat source for the stabilizer obtained from an Elder Jotun, obviously. These three folk often hide among less agile kin in the forest hunt realms. Be warned, they don't take kindly to tree loppers. Protective of saplings, so the stories go. They are elder spirits, after all. I know an expert in realm spirits by the name of Ludivine. She may be able to help. Ludivine. I can't say I'm familiar, but if she understands the inscrutable ways of these spirit realms, 
you want to seek her out. Okay, tell me more about the Placidic Exchicket. Placidia is a fey mineral which will be our conductor. In raw form, it's neither solid nor liquid. Non tuna, non Newtonian. Victor described it. Exceedingly rare and tough to mine, but chemi chemically similar to pale lodestone. Apparently, skyfallers, or as we call them, sun giants, collected in the form of etched ingots left behind by the court of Imperial. Sun giants have a tendency to collect stray fey goodies, though they too are a rare sight, mostly found in desert hunt realms. I've met a Grendel capable of human language. Perhaps she could enlighten us about her fellow giants. Truly? That is a most promising lead. If you know where to find this Grendel, please inquire on our behalf. There's a lot of talking, sorry. But it's going to be necessary. This is going to be the episode of talking. Tell me more about the Automa... <laughs> Tell me more about the Automaton Charmor. Ah, our combustion fluid. Likely the easiest one to set your mitts on. Legend tells that this substance courses through the veins of automaton bishops. They secrete it to attract other automatons, though we understand little about these those creepy imitations of life. Don't even know how they came to be. That's why Victor is out studying them in the desert astrolabe realm. I have something else to ask. How exactly do I obtain these from such creatures? It certainly won't be a walk in Central Park, but I'm glad you asked. Not many are willing to brave the necessary dangers. While I don't condone hunting such majestic beings, I can't condemn it in our current situation. Know, however, that many human deaths have been suffered by these creatures. Personally, I do some digging, attempt to make meaningful contact. Hostility is in their nature, but it is not their only nature. We're not going to kill any of them. We're going to go with the peaceful route. The outcomes are slightly different, at least narratively, so we're going to go there. Where do I start? Where are you? Which I am not. I begin with the charm oil by finding an automaton bishop. If hunting is not on your agenda, Victor is out research researching automatons. Seeking his counsel would be beneficial. But curious as he can be, I'm sure he'd appreciate he'd lend a hand. I'm sure he'd appreciate a lent hand. Okay, perfect. And I shall begin with Victor. Now a last word. Acquiring these resources will take time. Prepare, discover, and harness the arcane secrets hidden in these wilds. Patience is necessity for all of us. I'll try not to disappoint. Good. As Mr. Quartermain always bellowed before an expedition, may the love of the unknown guide you. Cool. Did, did we hear Puck? Oh yeah, yeah, there he is. Just hanging out. Ho, ho, ho. The Explorer's second doth keep her promises. An obedient cur. Not too fond of fairy folk, but who can blame the girl? While I regret that returning to Nightingale must wait many moons, Nelly's recourse has refilled your spirit, I see. The omen I carry is thus ill-timed. Whispers unfurl. Something is rotten in the realms, and it's more than the requiem being sung for Earth. As I took a knightly form, a little jay tittle-tattled in my ear. Reports of darkness passed, and of darkness still to come. The pale may only be the beginning of Earthkind's woes. Yet, not all jays can be trusted. And thus, before I tell all, I'll pry where I can while you seek the innards of beasts for Miss Bly. Hmm. Okay, 
I suppose we go back home and we, um, Home sweet home. It sure does look nice. Although, I'm pretty sure that an open workshop like this is never going to work. Because if you notice, it's full up on um, augments. Even though it's not actually full up on augments. Like, we don't use all the augments. It's just picking up a bunch of random ones. And um, I think it's going to be best if we have different rooms for each sub-segment. So room for these two, these guys, room for these guys, room for these four, and so on. And maybe a central room for the fire pit. But we'll get to that at some other point. For now, let's... Um, we need to go into an... Do, 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 do. Where do we need to go? I have forgotten. this one. We need to track this one. Let's, um, let's turn off all the other ones. Okay, and let's stick to just this one, the Imitations of Life one for, uh, for Victor. We should have all this stuff already, so we can just turn it in. Hopefully. I, th I believe we've got more than enough. Yeah, we've got two of these already. Okay, we're gonna need hollow metal. We got two hollow metals, good. Oh. Let's put that away. And the Dahlia. Okay, we need two U lumber. Do we have U? Oh no, we have one. Where do we find these? I think we have to kill those guys with the big... The bound? With the, um... The big clubs? I think we have to kill them for this. For you. Damn. So we can't turn this in yet. Five lacunas. We have plenty of lacunas. Supposed to need five bound i -Core. We also need, what, what was it, 10 bound bristle? Yes, and 10 arcane wicks. Okay, we need to hunt down the U. Let's reopen the, uh, the forest bloom and then try and get into a fight. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some U first drop. Fingers crossed. some trouble. This one right ahead, so let's go for it. If this doesn't have the guy we need to fight, then we just run away. Yep. Nope. Running away. Like, I don't want to waste time fighting a bunch of things that we don't need. Um, we'll go to this one next. Northwest. Alright, spawn a big guy. No, we don't need hexens. Alright, let's go north. So here's the next place, but there's a bunch of spiders here. Do we clear it? I think clearing it's a bad idea. I think we get closer, trigger it, and then let the spiders run away. Okay, give us a club guy. We need a big bruiser. If we get hexens again, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> oh, there we go. We got a big bruiser. Heck yeah.
Yo, why is Carrie over here? What? Oh, he's a hexen. Man, we just want one dude. We have to deal with all this crap. Oh, there's two of them. Oh boy. This is gonna be a very frustrating fight. Stop moving. A very, very, very get up. Very, very frustrating for me. What? Some food. This? Oops. Not what I want. Where'd the other one go? Oh jeez. We can take care of the uh, regular people. These guys, the regular guys, I can't remember what they're called. Man, this long ass fight. Just for one you. We need to get the carry and get her up good. Oh, that's not happening. We're gonna end up pulling that spider. Is she like stuck or something?
Oh, I like this. Yeah, stay stuck there, buddy. I'm okay with this. I'm okay. After that nonsense we just dealt with. Yeah, this is fine. Look at how much health this motherfucker has. This is ridiculous. Was that 10,000? Up. We just stare at trees. to do the uh, run past thing. It's small. Are you kidding? What the hell, dude? I went past his ass. How the fuck? Hmm, dude. This is some bullshit. You. you just wanted the one you. You did all that nonsense for that. Oh, what's the repair bill after this one fight? 200. Ooh, there's a lost hope somewhere. Or is it just this? Charm of the Assassin. I thought there was something in there. I guess not. I don't think there's anything fancy up here. chests or nothing. That's okay, you know what? I don't really care. Let's go back home. Because, um, want to complete the quest. Tis night time. Let's go take a quick nap. Just so it's daytime. Mm. 
already. I believe we have everything we need. Okay, we're now opening the portal to the desert astrolabe realm, so we can go talk to Victor. Um, we're actually having to go to a medium difficulty. Oop, let's fight off these uh, bound locals. Wow, a single shove just smashed the shit out of him. Yeah, we gotta go to medium because. We're going to end up needing rook parts, which we cannot get in extreme. Like, they literally will not spawn, so we have to go to medium in order to acquire them. Can you... Have a seat. Just have a seat. Let's take a look where he is. Uh, north, 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 northwest. Let's have a little chat with Mr. Frankenstein. I'm oh, sorry, Dr. Frankenstein. Back already? How often we lose track of the hours when our thoughts are set to explore the chasms of scientific knowledge. I have the bound samples you requested. Most excellent. Hand them over, would you? Careful now. Uh, I hope these are to your liking. Splendid, in perfect conditions it seems. I'll set to preservation straight away. But your fortitude must be akin to the knights of old to challenge such ghastly pastiches of humanity. The mere sound of their nightly moaning gives rise to regretful memories too terrible to confront. Have you learned more about the automatons? I've made a possible discovery. The central question is whether or not they were made to possess faculties such as wants and desires. Their migratory patterns indicate some sort of inner resolve. There's a rhyme to their movements, even if we don't yet understand their purpose, like how certain animals engage in courtship dances that puzzled biologists for centuries. Thus, the hermetic categorization as chess pieces is more befitting than we thought. Each has unique individual movements that serve the whole. However, the nomenclature of automatons may be inaccurate. How does this help our cause? We must learn the secrets of how they move, and more importantly, why. Their internal mechanisms that guide their actions. It's not exactly possible to perform a dissection, and I'm hesitant to approach them directly myself. I don't suppose you'd be eager to collect more samples for me. Um, if it helps us obtain the oil, I'll do it. If you could co obtain some components from the rooks, the smallest of the pack, that would help our cause. Whatever makes them tick must be the very same inside the bishop. I hate to dismantle such remarkable creations. If possible, a scavenge around for their discarded parts. Remember, the value of invention is only ever defined by the future cost. In the meantime, I will attempt to further embolden my comprehension of these Roman mechanical golems. We'll both need luckily. So, we need five mechanical gears and five raw gems, both tier one. Which is why I said we can only go into a medium realm. Because the second we pass uh, 50 realm power, then, we, then it starts dropping tier two. So it's impossible to actually get tier 1 parts in extreme difficulty. So, we gotta do this. And there's two ways to actually find these parts. One is to kill rooks. In fact, if we kill about 5 rooks, we'll get like 10 gems and a bunch of stuff. But I think we're gonna have to go the peaceful route. I don't want to kill any of them. I just want to find them. So, that makes our task a little bit harder. I'm going to try and cut out, because it's going to be a lot of walking around looking for parts. So I'm going to try and cut out that, and just cut back to this, or at least cut to when we find one. And then we'll come back and all that stuff. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get going on this.
Well, this sounds inviting. So I came down here in search of stuff, and um, we found these bound here. Since it's medium, and it's a really low level realm, we shouldn't have any problems at all. Look how easy that is. That's um that's real nice. That's real really nice. <laughs> like 19 tier 1 essences. That feels so uh, quaint. I was hoping to find parts down here, but it looks like we're not going to find any parts down here. So um well, it was a fun jaunt anyways, right? I think we may be forced to kill Brooks. Because we haven't found any. It's just I've gone a bunch of places. Like half our food is gone. And yeah, nothing. So I'm real sorry about this, Mr. Mr. Rook. Real sorry. I didn't mean to, you know, hurt you. Always stand back because when they explode it hurts. Okay, we got... Yep, we basically gotta kill five rooks. Oh, man. No, I don't want to mess with you. I mean, it is just a crappy bishop. Ooh. Put another one. They have little shields. I think we have to kill that bishop. Look, I'm real sorry, okay? It's it's for it's for the greater good. The greater good. Talk to Puck in a second. Let's sound um, stop rolling, please. Ah, good. You play fetch for Miss Bly. At risk of overshadowing your victory, I come with further tidings apropos of previous omens. While us Fey of the Summer Court are known for impulsive, indulgent delights, there is another court known for other things. The Summer's Antipode. Perhaps you've noticed the lack of ice in the realms. This unbalance stems from the Winter Court being sequestered for nearly a century. The whispers that abound tell of the apparent return of the Snow Queen and her winter tide. I bring word not to brood over, not yet. 
I shall follow these frigid whispers like a dream, and you shall follow Miss Bly's task. Before I vex, I go, I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Ominous. Okay, we need one more rook. Let's head back towards uh, Victor. Hopefully we'll find one along the way. Okay, here we go. The last rook that we need. Where are you at? Where are you at? Sprint. Again, real sorry. Real, real sorry. No hard feelings. Got your stuff, Vic. I have the automaton parts you requested. <laughs> My loyal assistant returns. I'm duly glad to see you and the automaton parts you've brought. Uh, there's something strange about these rook parts. When you cut a thing open, surprise is always abound. May I ask, how did you acquire these parts? Unfortunately, I dispose of a few rooks. I'm sorry. Despite my suggestion to the contrary. Forgive, forgive these carpings, but my numerous encounters with death and the wounds it's left behind have created a desire in me to avoid it at all costs. I will do my best to take this to heart. It'd be a lot easier if you actually had a bunch of tier 1 rook junk just hanging around, but there isn't. Like, I went to a bunch. A bunch of POIs in the not POIs, but like the unmarked areas, like little houses and little like platforms with loot on them. None. Let's not dwell on the topic then. Give me a moment to inspect the parts. Hmm, curious. You found something, I take it? There are the faintest traces of ether upon the metal. The hermetics posited long ago that when the Demi Demiurge materializes new life, it is pulled from the interrealmic ether. I'll withhold my thoughts on hermetic theism, but evidence does suggest a connection between the presence of ether and a be being's capacity for will. Okay, I, I, I wasn't going to go through his dialogue, but I think... It's important that we do this for lower purposes. Is ether present in the bound as well? A cardinal question. One I was hoping you would not ask. I have not found the courage to investigate this query because I fear both sides of the answer. Once my business with Nelly has been put to rest, I won't be able to delay such tests much longer. I thought the automatons were made by the Fae. As do most, and they may well be. The ether could have come after the fact, but we cannot rule this out. It has been assumed for years that the Fae are incapable of bearing true life. So how did these automatons gain a will if Fae created? We may not know, yet must still make decisions based on the implication of this ether. Are you saying those things have sentience? Is it so hard to believe? Our own organs, not simply complex machines, after all, designed by some unknown hand? Could our bones, muscles, and vitals not be replaced with pistons, cogs, and cams? This topic makes me uneasy. Ether, wasn't that a myth? Luminiferous ether has, in recent years, been considered an illogical theory. Realmic ether is another substance entirely, and anyone familiar with realmic sciences can confirm there is an intricate between intricate link between it and life. The substance may well be another kind of essence, and it's likely to be eons before we gain even a cursory knowledge of its full effects. It appears that, like galvanism, ether is another vital force that confers life into organic matter, in this case, inorganic matter too. Alright, what does this mean in relation to the bishop? 
It means there is a way to obtain the charm well without resorting to violent means after all. I know better than anyone that, whether natural or unnatural, every being has needs and wants, desires. What could the bishop possibly desire? The sands around us tell a story. Desert realms were not always drought laden and devoid of flora. Something happened long ago to upend the entire ecosystem. I've seen bishops sifting through the sand, digging for something that is something that is no longer there. And what is more indicative of conscience than a yearning to return to how things were before? A text in the observatory contained a recipe for a seed nursery of ritualistic intent, which the bishop may accept in exchange for their char charm oil. For seeds are the foundation of what they desire, lush gardens. This'll work. If the Fae designed them, then contracts are how automatons were made, and thus treaties are a language they must understand, like thirst or hunger. If you present the seed nursery with the conviction that you are seeking to make a contract of exchange, they will innately recognize the gesture as many creatures in the Fae Rawls do. All I have to do is present it. I vow that my confidence is not 100%, but few things are in the game of scientific pursuit. Should the trade occur, I asked to examine the Charmwell before delivery to Miss Bly, so that I might inspect its civility before she puts it to use. The last thing I want is for her to pour erratic fluids into that stabilizer. I'll fetch the oil one way or another. Okay, let's... let's, um... Thank you, Mr. Frank, Dr. Frankenstein. Thank you. We'll talk later. And it's quite the view, huh? Of nothing. Let's go back to the respite. Hmm. Nice little rains. Okay, let's take a look at this ritual seed nursery. We need two gems, chamomile seeds, and glass, which is pretty easy. Let's, um, let's do that. Let's make it. Okay, we've got the parts together. Let's make this ritual seed nursery. Okay, we've got it. Now, before we do anything else, let's make a spell. We're going to need this spell quite a lot for this next part. Um, or yeah, it spells. Track legend. Actually, we might, we might already have one. We might have just gotten one. Yep, we did. We'll put this on the X. But I think I'm going to call it for today, though. Uh, I think we've done quite a lot today. We've done a lot of questing. And we're going to continue more questing in the next episode. So, um, hope you all enjoyed. And I'll catch you all later, alright? Peace.